All right, so hi everyone. Again, my name is Madison Yen. This is my Facebook group, Branding Through Photography. And today I'm so excited. I have Barbara Gobi with Barbara Gobi Marketing. She's an amazing marketer. And um, you know, she has her own Facebook group called the Startup Tribe. She has great tutorials. Everything about Barbara, I love. Thank you so much for uh -huh. being here today. I appreciate it. Right back at ya. <laughs> tell me, so go ahead and just like introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about like, you know, you, your business, your group, all that good stuff. Yeah. So Barbara Gobi, um, I've been in marketing for over 25 years, um, but I started my own agency about nine years ago and we help small um, and medium sized business owners with their marketing specifically social media because that's the shiny object they all want but we also write marketing strategies and plans for bigger corporations and then i saw this need in the marketplace of um, especially women and these were calls that i was getting they were solopreneurs they couldn't afford to um, hire a marketing agency like mine but they had tons of questions so I said, I have to help them. <laughs> so I started our Facebook group called the Startup Tribe. And then we also created digital courses and online programs that they could take. Um, and it empowered them to launch and grow their own business and learn how to market themselves. What's your online course about? Like what's, what's the... Yeah, so our big course, our signature course is called Marketing Plan Masterclass. And I started it because like, the biggest question I was getting from people was, how do I do Instagram? And I would say, well, why do you need Instagram? And they said, I don't know. Everybody told me if I had Instagram, my business would be better. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh my goodness, they don't know. They don't know what I know, that you have to know who your customer is first. <laughs> so the That's marketing plan point. master. Yeah. So they all think, well, if I'm on Instagram, everything will be better. Just dead why, right? So the marketing plan masterclass walks them through how to understand truly what makes them different, who their customer is, you know, their ICA and how to figure out what their pain points are so they can solve that problem for them. And then how to write a plan, a strategy to reach their goals. So, I mean, that's like a perfect segue into kind of like what we're going to be talking about today. Um, originally when we were uh, kind of coming up with this live, uh, Barbara was like, well, just send me a few questions of like what you're thinking. And so I was sending her all these questions about social media and, and like, I don't know where I'm supposed to be and I don't know what I'm supposed to say. And then she's like, well, hold on now. I think we need to dive a little bit into like who your ideal customer is. And then we can figure out from there, like what platforms you need to be on, what your content needs to be, which is like such a big part because I don't think a lot of people like talking about their ideal customer avatar because I it's do. just, <laughs> do you, I see, I'm like, I always get confused. I'm like, I don't know. Is that really the person? Is it not? And I so can't. you just want to put out stuff and, and see what sticks and, and then like mm -hmm. you don't get any engagement and then you get frustrated with it or at least mm -hmm. I do. Yes, exactly. And I think that's how I met you. I mean, mm -hmm. I was doing ICA research. I think you were doing ICA yep. research. And I think you interviewed me because I fit your ICA. Yes. And you fit my ICA. Too, yeah, so. exactly. No, and yeah. I think you still do. I was telling I was telling Barbara the other day that like, you know, you're, you're the person. You're my person. <laughs> because well, I, I asked her i said well where where does your ica hang out you said well you're my ic where do you hang out <laughs> where do you hang out <laughs> right well yeah okay so i mean like let's just get started into it like can you just say like for all the people just so we're all on the same page what exactly is an ica right how do you find it how do you define it all of those things Right. So an ICA is your ideal customer avatar. And most businesses have between three and five different types of customers. And the problem is that they have one marketing message. And it's trying to appeal to all people. And when you do that, it doesn't resonate with any of them. So I always use the example, like if you went to Costco and I said, you know, get on that loudspeaker and announce your marketing message in Costco on a Saturday, no one's going to hear you. Yeah. No, it's not going to hit anyone. No one's, it's not going to resonate with them. But if I told you your ideal customer is a woman wearing a red shirt and she's over by the frozen foods, go over there and whisper your message to her. 
you're going to find her. She's going to get it. She's going to say, oh my God, you were speaking to me. And that's, that's why you want to know who your customer is because it's just as important to know who your customer isn't. So how do you know who your customer is, especially when you're just starting your business? Because like right. for me, my online business is relatively new. And so I feel like I'm just kind of making up this person. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm like, well, I don't know. I think that this is my person. They do this and right. this and this. And like, and you know, everyone talks about getting like super specific, like tell us what they do and how many mm -hmm. kids they have and how old they are. And, and it's like, right. are you just making that up or how does that work? <laughs> well, you know, there's two things. One, so many people tell me, well, everyone's my customer. Everyone yeah. can buy my product. Everyone benefits. My product is for everyone. Everyone is no say, one. <laughs> right. So I said, so babies. Could babies buy your, could, could babies take your photos? Well, no, they can't. Okay, well, what about their parents? Oh yeah, their parents can. Okay, well now we've just eliminated half the population. You know? <laughs> so now yeah, that we've gotten true. rid of, you know, you know, babies, you know, let's think of in terms of where you are. So for your photography services, I can't use you unless I get on a plane and go out there. You gotta right. come to me because I'm in Miami. And so now that eliminates the geographic nature yeah. of your business, mm -hmm. right? So it's better to think small and to find that niche audience yeah. because then you can tailor that message directly to them. Um, you know, and then think about your, your online programs too, your courses. Um, you know, you know that your target audience is at least business owners, entrepreneurs, you know, mm -hmm. people who like me want to take their own branding photos for their marketing. Yeah. So, you know, you can just by process of elimination, figure out who they are. And while you might say, well, they're women and they're men. Great. That's two different ICAs because they have yeah. two different pain points and it's okay to have multiple. Like I said, everyone has three to five. So mm -hmm. it's okay to figure out how many you have. Okay. And so, that's a, that's a really good point. Then if you have multiple ICAs, then how does that affect your content strategy, like your marketing strategy? So if you're like, okay, guys and girls, like you talk to guys and girls totally differently. So yep. is that just like, you know, you come up with two different marketing messages or do you make like, do you prioritize like one over the other? Like mainly I, I like talk to women and mm -hmm. then there's some guys in there. So I'm mm -hmm. like, most of my messaging would go to women and then, you know, kind of add stuff in there or like, how does that work? Yeah, you would have different marketing messages. And then with that, you would have different um, branding photos as well. You want different pictures because mm -hmm. you want the picture to appeal to them too, not just the message. So um, that's why that's really important to know exactly who they are. They also might be on different platforms. Like me, I'm on Instagram, but I know that my ideal customer is not on Instagram. If they so, were on Instagram, they wouldn't need me. So then why do you, why are you on Instagram then? Like, is it okay to just be like, you know what? This is not my platform. Just get rid of it. Just be done. Sure. Or you you don't, don't be on everything. You don't have to be on everything. You just have to be everywhere where your customer is. And for me, if I'm telling my clients, how to do Instagram because that's something they want to know. And then mm -hmm. they say, well, let me go see Barbara's Instagram and I'm not there. Then I'm not really much of an authority. Right. It's like if they said, you know, Madison, let me see your portfolio of pictures. Well, I don't have any. I'm just telling you how to take pictures, <laughs> you know? So, so it raises like your credibility. It raises engine. your credibility. Okay. Yeah. But I'm not everywhere. I'm not on Snapchat. I'm not on TikTok, you know, right. just not, I don't have time. It's scary. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So, and then I think, I think that's another part too, like really niching down though for your market. I wanted to go back to that for a second. I think that people get really scared. Like I get scared too, like having small numbers. And so, I mean, do those numbers matter? Like, obviously you want to establish credibility. You want to show your authority, but then if you're sitting around with like 300 followers, like what's your, does that look bad? Is that just a vanity metric that you need to get over? Like, what is that? Like, what, how do you yeah. deal with that? It is a vanity metric and it is all about quality over quantity because, mm -hmm. um, you know, for example, I have a client that we just took over some of their marketing and they have about 9,000 Instagram followers and, Pretty good. 
8,990 of them are fake. They bought these followers. Oh, so no. actually it hurts their engagement. It hurts their reach because of the way the algorithm works. And they're actually getting penalized for content they post because they have such a high number of fake followers. So I would rather have a small but mighty following than a big fake one any day. Okay. I mean, I think that's, I think that's a good point. And I just, it is a vanity metric. You just need to get over it. It's like ego gets in there. And yeah. so then you just want to make that work. Well, it is, okay. and I'll, I'll follow up on that too. Um, it's rolling out this week. They're starting to announce it, that they're getting rid of page likes on Facebook and you'll only have followers now. So because before you could like a page, but not follow it. Yeah. Um, and you can see a page without liking or following it, but yeah. if you are truly following it, then you'll see their content. So they're getting rid of likes, not likes on a comment, likes on a page. And they're just mm -hmm. going to focus on followers. And like with my page, I have more followers than likes anyways. Mm -hmm. How do you think that's going to affect like the rest of businesses out there? Like, do you think people are going to be freaking out or do you think it's like, well, no one really notices anyway. So I think the ones that are going to be freaking out were to focus on the number anyways. Yeah. I've never been one to look at vanity metrics. I focus more on engagement and reach than I do on likes and followers. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about Facebook then. Um, when I was telling Barbara about my ICA, I was like, you know, I think that people are on Instagram. I think that like the kind of person that I'm targeting, like they're more than the average business owner who doesn't know, like I would say the average business owner doesn't know a lot about social media. They just, they don't know they're, they think it's this shiny object, but I think, um, my people are like, they know about it. They want to be on it, but I don't think that's like where they hang out. I feel like they hang out in Facebook groups and they're, they're chilling on Facebook. I also have like a slightly older demographic. I'm not saying like, you know, retired age or anything like that, but you know, probably like forties, fifties, somewhere in that, in that range. And so I think that Facebook is kind of a good spot, but um, and Tara mentioned this too, and the questions leading up to this, like Facebook pages have like no reach at all. I mean, you get mm -hmm. no engagement. So how are you supposed to, like, if you're, if your people, you think your people are somewhere and you're posting and you're not getting any of them, what does that mean? Like, and how do you fix that? Yeah, that's a really great question. And I'll tell you, you're not crazy and you're not alone. This is a real thing that's happening. And I actually put together a whole little book that I'll share with you at the end that talks about these rules and how to, how to hack them. Yeah. And what happened is January 11th, 2018. I know this date because it's like Armageddon in the social <laughs> media world. Mark Zuckerberg said, we will not show business pages on the newsfeed. He came right out and said it. He was not joking around. And the reason is because Facebook was built to engage people in meaningful conversation. This is their words. Meaningful conversation does not happen on a Facebook business page. Nobody wakes up and says, I want to go see what my insurance carrier is talking about on Facebook, right? Yeah. And I know this because I represent a lot of insurance carriers. <laughs> um, so, but what they do is they do want to engage with people they know, like, and trust. It's usually their friends and their family. And at any given time, there's about 1,500 people and businesses competing for that space on the newsfeed. Mm -hmm. Facebook's only going to show about 300 of them. Wow. And why that's important is 85% of the time, people never leave the newsfeed. They don't hop from page to page to page. Yeah, so you that. really want to get on the newsfeed. That's really key. And Facebook's only going to show you the ones you engage with the most. So if you're like, hey, I wonder what's my friend. I haven't seen her in forever. She's not on, on Facebook anymore. And you go to her page and you see that she's posting all the time. You're like, well, why am I not seeing her posts? Mm -hmm. It's because you probably didn't like or comment some of her last, pre, you know, her previous posts. Mm -hmm. So Facebook said, well, she, she doesn't want to see her on the newsfeed anymore. We're not going to show it. And that's what happens with business pages. So it doesn't mean that you can't be on the newsfeed. It just means it's that much harder. So I so, feel like, I'm sorry to go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I just, I feel like the only way I get any traction or interaction at all is if I share it to my personal page. And then that limits my entire audience to just my friends 
And right. that's like, I don't, I mean, I want more people than my friends to buy my stuff, you know, or to follow me. So like, I, like, is it just lost then? Is Facebook just kind of worthless in terms of the Facebook page? Or do you, is that still another one of those things where you just have to be there? <laughs> Well, yes and no. And I mean, it, it, you do kind of have to be there. It does show mm -hmm. that you're legitimate. It shows that you're an expert in your industry, mm -hmm. but you have to look at all of these things differently. I'm on multiple platforms, but I post different content every place I go because I'm talking to a different audience. Wow. So the people who might come to my business page don't know me personally. They really don't care to know me personally and they don't want to hang out with me. They just might want to read some, you know, marketing strategies. Great. I have content for them. And then I share things to my personal page too, because my friends know that this is a part of me. I'm a marketer, you know, mm -hmm. I will share something interesting that I think they need to know. I don't mm -hmm. share everything to my personal feed. In fact, Facebook doesn't want you to run a personal page as a business. Yeah. So, and they'll, they'll ding you for that. But what it means is if you are posting quality content that people will like, comment, and share, then you'll be rewarded. You'll show up on the newsfeed. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of my clients who show up on the newsfeed because we're posting engaging content. Their audience is saying, we want to see this. And, you know, there's some tricks that you can do to make sure that you're seeing the brands you want to follow or you want people to follow your page. If you go into following on the page, there's a little down arrow. If you click on that, you'll see the option to see first, which means anytime they post new content, okay. it will automatically be on the top of the newsfeed. So is that something you'd recommend to put like in a call to action? Like, Hey, if you like this content, go to my follow and then see first. Yes. Is that something that you do? Yeah. But people don't know how to do that. So, you know, a, a screenshot or a okay. video tutorial of how to do that is life changing. Cause whenever I show people how to do this, they're like, I had no idea. So it's always a great way to help people see your content that want to see it. Okay. That's a really, that's a really good point. And then also, um, I have a friend, Tara, who's also in the group and she's a photographer like me. Mm -hmm. And she was saying like, we both have noticed that, um, we, we think that Facebook posts do better when they have like multiple pictures in it. Have you noticed that? Is that something, mm -hmm. are we just like making that up or is that something? <laughs> um, I, I haven't noticed that. Um, mm -hmm. I have a client that sometimes she's an interior designer, so we do a lot of before and after shots. So oh, I'll yeah. actually take those and turn those into a slideshow, which essentially creates a video and Facebook mm -hmm. loves video content. Okay. So if I have multiple images, I make them into a slideshow. Okay. All right, cool. Well, so, Facebook will and then push that up. Mm -hmm. And then I might even like try a gallery too, just to test it. Just be like, yeah. I don't know. we'll see how that works. Now so, on Instagram though, I'll answer that on mm -hmm. Instagram. If you post multiple photos, what Instagram does is it shows you the first photo. And if somebody hasn't interacted with it, the next time they show that post, it'll be the second photo or the third photo. So it looks like a different post. It's really just the photos that they didn't cool. manually scroll through. So I did a little test yesterday on Instagram. I posted something. It got like five likes. I was so irritated. And so I repost and I had three pictures in it and I reposted the exact same content and I switched up the first image and it got more. I mean, it's not still not great, but wow. like it got a lot more and I posted it the exact same day. And so I think that obviously I think photo makes a difference. And then I think that, um, you know, like even posting the same thing twice, like it's not the same people looking at it because mm -hmm. you're not always hitting like your entire, you know, following, you're only hitting part of it. Yeah. Well, yeah. So the way that Instagram algorithm works is when you post something, they show it to 10, like, I think it's 10% of your audience the first hour. Oh. If those people like comment on that, then they'll show it to another 10%. And if those people like or comment, then they'll open up to your full audience. Wow. So when you initially post it, if nobody engages with it, then they don't open it up to your full reach. But if you post and then you post again, then all you've done is taken audience from that first mm -hmm. post and given it to the second one. Okay. So that's why I always like to at least space 24 hours between my posts to make sure I'm not taking people, taking eyeballs away from that first post and I'm truly giving it a chance to 
do its thing. Okay. All right. That's really, that's really good to know. Cause I posted mm-hmm. twice and I was like, I don't know. I don't, cause I mean like what's the lifespan of a post, you know, is it just, it really depends. I mean, I have posts that I posted weeks ago that are still getting new likes, that's you know? Awesome. So, um, I would, you know, give it at least 12 hours or so, 24 hours. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, give it a chance to, to do it. To take off. <laughs> okay. And so then just talking about like what we're posting, how do we know if we're actually reaching our ICA and not just like our friends that support us, you know, mm-hmm. like, is it just engagement? I mean, yeah. how do you know if you're actually hitting the right person by the content that you're sharing? So, um, you know, the first thing is you really have to get to know them and what, is keeping them awake at night. What is their real problem? So I have a client who is a personal trainer and she developed this fitness equipment. And she says, you know, I, I constantly have these conversations with her of the difference between marketing and selling. She's like, well, people need to buy my piece of equipment because it's safe. And if they drop it, it's not going to hurt them. And it's not going to ding their floor. I said, is that the real reason someone would buy your equipment? And I said, your audience is probably me. And she's probably thinking, uh, you know, I live in Miami and it's July and I hate wearing sleeveless shirts because I hate my arms. So I cover my arms up and I'm really hot. And that's my real problem. I'm really insecure about my arms. Mm, So, so you know, think of what really is hits them emotionally. It's not whether or not if I drop this, it's going to ding my floor. It's whether or not if I buy this, can I wear sleeveless shirts again? (laughs) You know, so you really have to get to know them. That is such a good point. Like I don't, let's see. Okay. All right, guys. I'm sorry. I have not been seeing any comments here. Yes. Okay. Great. Bot followers. Okay. Are there any questions? That was such a good point. (laughs) Like, cause it gets into that mental like psychology of you know, why they're buying something in the first place. And it right. and it's like these insecurities and self-consciousness mm-hmm. that a lot of reasons like that drives what people buy. It's not always just because it has this yeah. cool feature. And mm-hmm. so that was, that's awesome. Um, is yeah. everyone good? Do we have questions or anything it's, like that? It's called a story loop and you want to open a loop and close it. So I use a formula that's problem, solution, problem, solution. So the problem is I hate my arms. The solution is I've tried every diet and every other fitness thing and nothing works. The pro or I've tried all these different things. The problem is none of those things worked. And then the solution is that fitness product. So I've addressed my problem. Mm -hmm. The solution was all the things I tried. The problem is those things didn't work. The real solution is this. So you always want to open it and make sure that you close that loop. All right. That's good. I'm writing that down. Taking notes. So for you, the problem is, oh my God, I have to put myself out there. I hate the way I look. I Mm -hmm. don't have any good branding photos, but I know I have to do it. I've tried to take my own photos. The problem is they suck. (laughs) The solution (laughs) is your course on how to take photos that you'll love of yourself and help grow your brand. So that, and that's such a, like, that's such a great point. So I feel like I've talked about like mindset a lot for my people and just like these insecurities and confidence and, and posing, like, I don't know how to do it. And I don't really get that much engagement from it, but I'm like, this is such a big point. Like every time I book any sort of session, the first thing out of their words are like the first words out of their mouth are, I hate having my photo taken. I hate the way I look. I don't feel confident. So I know that this is like a huge pain point that they're scared to have pictures taken. And when Mm -hmm. I talk about it, I don't really get any sort of response. And I'm like, I don't know if it's because I don't have the right people following that feel that way. Like maybe I'm not like, I'm not hearing it right. Mm -hmm. Or maybe like, it's just a huge insecurity that no one wants to admit. Like maybe no one wants to talk about their arms and not and covering it up, you know, like, no, maybe no one wants to do that. So how do you know when your content resonates with people? I mean, just purchase it like when they buy. Well, and yeah, it could take us several iterations before they get to that point. It mm-hmm. could be, you know, that they're, they start following, liking, commenting you, then they start sharing your content, then they tell their friends about it, yeah. okay. you know, so it's, it takes a little bit of a stage to get there because 
they're, if it's something that really hits them, they're probably embarrassed about it. And we yeah. need to let them know this is safe space. You can talk about this. It's okay. okay. You're not alone. Um, but it really depends too on which platform you're on mm -hmm. and how to get them to find you. Like, how do I, how do women discover you and your services on Instagram? And you know, a lot of that comes down to getting in there and having the conversation with them and pulling them in. Mm -hmm. You can do that on a lot of different Facebook groups. There's so many groups out there. We talk about groups in this guide and how oh, to yeah. use that for market research and to actually bring them in and go in there and talk about, talk as you. Don't go in there and talk as your brand. Build a rapport with that person before they mm -hmm. and get let them get to know and like you and trust you before you start saying, hey, you know, I have this group that might help you. Mm -hmm. um, if it's on Instagram, get in their DMs. You know, Lizzo had it right. <laughs> get in the DMs and start having <laughs> conversations with people. Talk okay. to them. And then third is use the right hashtags. Use hashtags that mm -hmm. they're using, not the ones that you think are obvious. And I have a hashtag strategy in this. So many times we use hashtags that are the most popular because they're the most popular, but you're not going to get found. If you're using a hashtag that has a million posts and you only have a hundred followers, you're never going to get found using that hashtag. Kim so, Kardashian. So let's talk about hashtags for a second. Okay. Back to your, your lady with the fitness equipment. Yeah. Probably before she was using stuff like fitness equipment, like hashtag right. fitness. Yep. Hashtag, hashtag fitness, fitness. equipment. Right. And, but like, what are some of the hashtags that she should have been using? Like hashtag get fit or, or like, I don't know, like just, I mean, are people actually in the fitness mindset before they're going into it? Or are you trying to get just like moms hashtag, you right. know, like mom life or something, you know? Yeah. Like hashtag mom bod. Like yeah. one of them is like quarantine 15. Like if you've gained yeah. weight during quarantine, you're researching mm -hmm. things of quarantine 15 and you're like, oh wait, there's fitness equipment, you know? So you want to get found where they're hanging out, not the obvious place. So okay. like my car insurance guy, you know, if we use hashtag car insurance, who the heck is looking for that? I'm going to go search for car insurance on Instagram. But if I use hashtag my new car, a lot of people, when they get a new car, they're like, hey, hashtag my new car, mm -hmm. you know? So I do have a bit of an Instagram strategy, I mean, a hashtag strategy on which ones to use and which ones not to use. Um, I like to dominate low hanging fruit, like a thousand posts or less or 10,000 really? posts or less. Okay. Because when you dominate a hashtag, then Instagram will start showing you to more people. That's really, that's a really good point. And in her guide, she actually talks about like five hashtags to this, five hashtags to this. So it's like a really helpful um, key when you're trying to figure out which ones do I use and how big of a following should I have and, and all that stuff. So definitely mm -hmm. um, check that out. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. So, okay. And then for just my main goal in social period, like, is it to be social? Is it to sell? Should I do both? Like, I want people to know who I am and what I do so then they can buy my stuff. But also I'm like, you know, I, I don't know. What do you, I, I assume I would, it's to be social. Well, I would say if you could pick one thing, it's just to connect, okay. you know, just connecting with people, mm -hmm. let them know that you hear them. They'll know, like, and trust you more. Like when I built our Facebook group, um, we just started building it like in November, six months ago. And I just wanted to connect with other people who had, you know, the same questions and complaints that I, mm -hmm. this whole audience and realize there's a whole group of you alone. Let's all get together. This is a private, safe space for you to connect. Yeah. And her group and is then, amazing. Y'all definitely check it out. Um, she talks all about just like startup troubles. I mean, entrepreneur troubles, like wins too. I mean, it's not all, I mean, it's not negative, but. There's, there's we laugh in there. cry. It's better than cats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then like you're doing all the things you're posting daily, every 24 hours or whatever. And you know, we're posting the content that we think we are, our people want to hear. Like, mm -hmm. how do you troubleshoot when it's not really getting through? 
I, and we kind well, of talked about this, I guess, now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah. And I don't post daily. I focus on quality over quantity. I think the biggest thing is to have a content strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, this month, you know, Jasmine Starr had the 30 day Instagram challenge in June. And I just didn't think it was right for me to be doing that challenge. I mean, I'm no judgments on people who did it or didn't do yeah. it. I just, there was just so much turmoil in the world. I couldn't do it. So I went silent for a month on Instagram and said, okay, July 1st, I'll do it. So I did post every day this month. I don't think it's actually helped my numbers that much compared Mm -hmm. to when I wasn't doing it every day Mm -hmm. because I focus on the content. So like with all of our clients, we map out all the content we're going to post for the whole month and we don't post every day for them either because we really focus on quality posts and posting at the right time of the day and posting on the right day, you know? So we focus on those things more and content that's going to resonate than the number of posts that we do. Okay. That makes sense. Um, and then have you ever read jab, 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 right hook? Oh yeah. I have it right there on my shelf. Girl, that book is so good. So for those of you who haven't heard, um, Jab, 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 Right Hook is a book by Gary Vaynerchuk, who is like social media guru, marketing guru, like amazing, posts a bajillion things a day, has people following him around with a video camera, constantly creating content. And he has really great content. Like, Mm -hmm. and so I was reading in the book, pretty much saying like, post things that in like that startup conversation. And so for like weddings, I found an article about like coronavirus and how people are dying from going to their weddings. And I'm like, you know, this is like a relevant topic in our industry right now, but it has nothing to do with my business. You know, like it's, it's wedding photography, but it's not, you know, anyone who has hired me and I'm not going to shoot a wedding. So like, I don't like, is that, is that okay to post things that don't, that are not always like Barbara Gobi or Madison Yen, you know, like how, how much should you be posting like your own content that you're creating versus just like sharing stuff that's around yeah. that's relevant, you know? Yeah. A hundred percent. You know, I have, uh, I call it my 80, 20 rule or my cocktail party rule. So I only post about myself 20% of the time. And I post about, information I think my audience would need the other 80%. So always think about like, if you're going into a cocktail party and you walk up to someone and you just say, hi, I'm Barbara Gobi. I'm a marketing and branding strategist. And I do this and I do this and I do this and I do this. And then you walk away. It's like sitting down to watch TV and just seeing commercials. People are going to turn the channel. Mm -hmm. So you don't want them to turn the channel on your page. You want them to say, you know what? Madison always has this really helpful information about all things weddings and all things photography. I'm deliberately going to go to her page to check it out. Okay. So you become that resource of helpful information that they know, like, and trust, and they recommend to people. And that's how you grow your following. I mean, and my, um, like in the startup tribe, I never talk about what I do. <laughs> to me, they're just, I'm just the hostess in that group. I let them dictate the conversation. But you have like all of these trainings about like everything. Guys, it's like email marketing, social media marketing, strategy, like actual like productivity, actually finishing things. So it's like you're kind of coming at it from this angle of like mm-hmm. an authority and you're, you're the person. And so then when I have like marketing questions, you're the person that I ask because well, you've like, you, but you've established that, you know, reputation is like someone who knows all things around. It's not just like one specific part. So that's pretty cool. That's the jab, 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 right hook mentality. I'm in that group just to serve so that when I do have something to sell, I have an audience who knows I'm an expert in my industry. That's and cool. if you aren't using groups, whether it's your own or others as market research, you're missing a huge opportunity. My group secret is market research. Mm. So once or twice a week, I'm posting a question that engages my audience because I want to know what their pain point is. This is how I know what my ICA needs from me. So I'll post like, which platform do you struggle with the most? They'll say Instagram. You'll notice a week later, I'll do a tutorial on Instagram. Or create a freebie, which builds the email list. Or create a freebie, which builds my email list. No matter what, it is to serve, but it's also, 
you know, helping me understand my customer better. That's such a good point. And I, so like for me, a lot of my people are business owners and their moms. And so I'm part of the boss mom group. Do you, are you in that one too? So I like following that one to see like what's in their head, like what's going on. Yes. Yeah. Especially if it's a niche that you, that is not you. And you're like, I need to understand the psychology of this person. Yeah. Go hang out. And just, even if you just read the comments, Yeah. but go in there and then comment or ask questions as you, because what's going to happen is they're going to say, well, who's this person, you know, that's responding to me. They'll click on your personal profile, right? They'll mm -hmm. see the link to your company. They'll go there. Then they'll see you have a group and they'll follow that. They'll follow this trail of breadcrumbs. Okay. 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 That's a really good point. So did, how, okay. When people are asking questions and they're like, I don't know how to do this. Do you actually come in there and like, well, you need to do X, Y, Z. Like, I mean, how, how do you, are you kind of coming in as like a know-it-all or asking them more questions to, cause I feel like I'm like, as soon as I see it, I'm like, Oh, salesperson, get away from that. <laughs> you know, you like, know as, as tempting as it is, I don't, I try to like first say, wow, that's a really great question. I see that a lot. And I might offer a little bit of advice, but I don't come in like a bull in a China shop because you're not going to win it. People over I don't think way. people are looking for it. Sometimes I think no. they're looking to like talk about their problems and they're not really like, yes, you know, they just want to know mindset. that they're heard and understood. Mm, I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Okay. Yeah. So I have another question here. Tara asks, what is the right time of day to post? It's different for everyone in every platform. So if you're on Facebook, if you're talking about a business page, if you mm -hmm. go to your insights and then you click on posts, it will tell you the best time of the day to post for your business page when your audience is on. And a word of warning, it's in small print, but those are in Pacific time. Oh, so okay. yeah. So I had um, a client who was a photographer and she had thousands and thousands of followers, but wasn't getting any engagement. So I said, well, let's see how you're posting. And she would post at 9 a.m. in the morning before she'd go out on her photo shoot. And she's like, and nobody interacted with me. Mm -hmm. So when I looked at her insights, her peak time of the day was 9 p.m. So 12 hours had passed. So her post was buried. Okay. I do find that for a lot of my clients, the peak time is 8 or 9 o'clock at night. Because if you think about it, You've had dinner, you did the dishes, you did the homework, put the kids That's to bed, so you sit on the couch, and then you start scrolling. Okay. So it is a peak time for a lot of people, but you really have to look at your insights. So, um, okay. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was saying on Instagram, there's an app called When to Post. You connect your feed to it, and it'll tell you the three best times of the day for you to post. But the difference is Instagram and Facebook are very different animals. Do not mm -hmm. treat them the same. Instagram's feed is not chronological. Is it so just, it's just based on like, it's based on engagement. So if you're, uh, if your post won't get buried, if you post it at 9 AM, when you check back at 5 PM, it may still be at the top. Okay. Oh my gosh. That's so much right there. Like, so what do you use the scheduler then to, to do that? Like I, I hear that some um, platforms kind of punish you a little bit if you're using like an outside scheduler, but if you're just doing it on Facebook, is that cool then? Yeah. You know, I have heard that too, that um, Facebook does not like you using third party tools mm -hmm. like Hootsuite or Buffer and they would penalize you. They created their creator studio. So you can post and schedule posts from Facebook to Facebook or Instagram. So you can use their tool and you're not penalized. I've also heard recently that they no longer penalize, but I heard that from a third party tool who was trying okay. to get me to invest in his third party tool. Of course. That's so I, I just post organically. I figure I'm already, you know, salmon swimming upstream. I'm not going to add more problems to this by using a third party tool. I post. I totally, I hear that. Heather says, what's the name of the IG app? I think it was when to post, right? When to post. Yes. When to post. I think. Yeah. That, um, that is so helpful. So I know that we're also, uh, there's a lot of people who are kind of in social curator here with us. Um, mm -hmm. 
And if you're not familiar with what Social Curator is, it's a monthly membership where you get stock photos from the amazing Jasmine Starr. She's a great marketer. And, um, and she gives you like idea captions and kind of like a marketing strategy. So her big thing is like repurposing content and then like posting on one platform and then moving it to another one, but doing it mm-hmm. different days. So when you're like laying in bed doing it and you, you go to like Facebook and then you move over to Instagram, then you're not seeing the exact same post. Do you do that too? Or are you just like, no, Facebook is this content and that's it. And then, or are you repurposing? Like, what do you do? Not always. It really depends on what the piece of content is. And I look at, you know, of all the platforms I do, is this piece of content good for both? Mm -hmm. So we have a client, we manage six different Facebook and Instagram accounts for her because she's got a lot of different brands. So we don't ever post the same posts on the same day and we will stagger it so that because people platform hop. They yeah. go through Instagram mm-hmm. when they've seen everything and they're done with it, then they'll go over to Facebook and we don't want them seeing the same content there. So we try not to post the same thing in the same place at the same time. Okay. And then sometimes we will repurpose a piece of content. So if I post something on Twitter on a Monday morning, I might post it again on Twitter on a Wednesday evening because I might hit a different audience. Okay. So there's some co- pieces of content like Twitter or Facebook. We will post that content twice. Okay. Same content. I don't do that on Instagram though. Cause then it would be like same picture and yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. And then Jad, kind of last question for me, unless other people have questions, drop them in the comments below, but are there like any just magical social that you have like the most return and everyone should be on it? Because if you're not on it, you're, you're losing money and you're losing business and all that stuff. Like is there anything like that? There's not, any, there's not any one because it really just depends on who your target audience mm-hmm. is. Um, I would say for photographers and your photography um, followers, um, I'm missing a big opportunity on Pinterest. And we have a Pinterest mm. expert coming on our, um, in our group next month. Oh, um, yeah, that'll be good. Who, I had a consultation with her and I took her into the algorithm and the analytics of one of my clients and she pointed out a thousand things that we were doing wrong and Um, why. And I went, Oh, it blew my mind. I, okay. After we talked about like the live and everything, Barbara's like, have you thought about going on Pinterest? (laughs) And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I thought about going on Pinterest, but like, it's like one more thing that I have to do. But so yeah. my last week I did a bunch of, um, I made just random pins of some of the blog posts that I did and my engagement went up like 500%. I mean, it's cause it was like nothing before, but I cannot believe the engagement that I got from one day of just doing a few pins. Like if anyone is blogging a lot, Mm -hmm. I can just do that. And it doesn't have to be like all photos either. Like you can make little graphics, you can make sayings, you can turn quotes into a little Mm -hmm. pen. Um, so much of it, I like I'm sold. So yeah, I cannot wait to see the Pinterest one for sure. Because It has tremendous SEO and linking authority. Yeah. And And I hear the analytics are like pretty good on it too. Like you can see where they came in from and what posted Mm -hmm. better, what pins did better than another one. And you can post multiple at one time. So that's yes. really cool. so much detail in their analytics. And if it's your target audience, it's like 80% women. Yeah. And oh, it's not true. just on there to plan their wedding and their design their home. Yeah. So, I agree. Yeah. Pinterest is what we're going to have um, a tutorial on it in August in the startup tribe. Um, but that I, I think is one that a lot of businesses could really benefit from. Um, you know, for me, there's a million things I'm on and I like to do, but my audience is on Facebook. Okay. You know, I love Instagram, I, but I post different content on my Instagram than I do on Facebook. And then you just put like, do you put most of your content kind of in your groups? Like, do you put all your effort mainly in groups or like on your page? Um, I would say I put more effort into my group because if you have a group, um, Bella Vasta puts it best. The front of your house is all manicured and neat and tidy. Mm -hmm. That's your business page. The backyard where the party is, that's your group. And your job is to be the hostess and make sure that, you know, the drinks are flowing, the Wi-Fi is on, the conversation's happening. It's a big commitment to have a group, but 
you know, that's where the party is. You it's can't the go mullet. inside and take a nap. Yeah. Yeah. The party in the back. I love that. Okay. So that's, that's just amazing to me. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I don't have any other questions, guys. Do you, do you guys like, she has really nailed it for all the things that I had questions on. Um, Barbara, tell them a little bit about your freebie. We're going to drop a link to the freebie as well as the Facebook group in the comments. Y'all have to check both of them out. I've already like seen the freebie. It's wonderful. Um, and it's like really well designed too. You did such a good job. Well, thank you. I don't know, my logo <laughs> looks weird on there. So yeah, it's, um, it's just go to barbaragobi.com FB tips. And I have mm -hmm. Facebook and Instagram tips on there. Yeah. Um, and, and the hashtag just, strategy, yeah. um, kind of the reasons why certain things are acting a certain way. You also talk about YouTube a little bit too, right? Um, well, <laughs> I didn't even do a whole YouTube strategy in here, but that, you know, that answers your question too. Um, globally, there's more people on YouTube than on Facebook and it comes in just second in the U S like we're talking 230 million people on Facebook, 200 million on YouTube in the U S mm -hmm. and video content is so hot. Think about it. YouTube is the world's second largest search engine owned After by Google. the world's largest search engine. Jeez. Right. So, I mean, so, there's no going wrong in that. I know. So, I mean, if, but it's, it's different. You can't just post a picture and, you know, post a link to an article. There's a lot of work that goes into a YouTube channel cause we're building one right now and it's a lot more work. No, I totally, I totally hear that YouTube. It's, it takes so much time. I was talking to Tara about this cause it's like you're producing videos and it's a lot of work and being on video, not, I don't like it. That much. <laughs> yeah. I don't, harder. I don't either. But definitely like, like, I think that's where it's, it's at. And then, you know, that kind of compares to IGTV where you can kind of repurpose more of that content, the video and everything. Yep. Yeah. It's one of the reasons why Facebook and you and Facebook and Instagram push video content so much is because it increases time on platform TOP. And the, the higher the time on platform, the longer someone spends on their platform, the more they can charge an ad revenue. Ooh, so yeah. they want you to post long form video content on Facebook and Instagram. And that's why they love things like Facebook lives because that content sticks around. It gets people to tune in and it keeps them on the platform. And now a million ads have popped up on the right sidebar and they can charge a lot for that. Yeah. That totally makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right, Barbara. Well, I don't want to take too much more of your time. This is a long mm -hmm. live, but it was so information informational and I'm so grateful. Um, I, I guess, I don't know. Do you have anything else to say? I mean, I have so much to say. There's no way we could get it all in. I mean, <laughs> I could talk about social media all day long, but I did put together some of my favorite tips in here because yeah. the rules keep changing. I, I wish I could write this in pencil. Don't hold me to this. It may change in a month, but this that's, is what you need to be doing right now. And that's, and that's all we need. Like you got to do it right now. Like you can't be planning for a year in advance for a social media strategy. Like you gotta, you gotta go now. So definitely right. y'all check that out. Amazing startup group. Amazing. Barbara Gobi with Barbara Gobi, Gobi marketing. She's wonderful. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And Thank I you. Will, Someone said the link isn't working. So I'll, I'll post the new link in there in just a second. We'll fix the link. I'll fix the link. We'll fix the link. Y'all hang tight, but I will go ahead and hop off the live and thank you. From there. Thanks guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Okay. I think it's done. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Barbara, that was so great. Oh my gosh. Like so much. Thank you.